الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد الحمد لله we've reached uh, the end of uh, these classes um, in the beginning we mentioned that uh, we might not be able to go through uh, all of the names uh, in one go uh, so we'll go through as many as we can and alhamdulillah we've gone through a good portion of the names uh, and we've reached today uh, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Al-Hadi uh, Al-Hadi in uh, Arabic, the translation uh, into English is the one that guides or the one that provides the guidance. And there are many verses in the Quran and the hadith from the Prophet uh, that tell, tell us uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that guides. Uh, Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, And these are just a few verses There are many other verses And many ahadith from the Prophet But in order for us to understand it uh, Just like we, uh, we've understood uh, Some of the other names We need to understand it In its proper uh, In its proper meaning In its proper context when someone says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that guides, then people only think of one type of guidance, right? When in reality, guidance comes in very different forms. Um, so the scholars in Islam, they were divided up into four, some have divided into more than that. Uh, so we'll go through some of them here, inshallah, in today's class. Uh, the first uh, form of guidance, uh, the scholars in Islam they refer to as al hidayah al amma meaning general guidance, and that has nothing to do with uh, the religion in particular, uh, but rather it is a general thing, um, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa taala is the one that guides His creation to their maslaha to what benefits them, right? So this is for the mu'min, for the believer, for the kafir, in terms of this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that guides them to the education, that guides them to whatever they desire in this world, right? Um, and similarly with other creations, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that guides uh, the animals, makes them uh, leave, in certain in the hadith it mentions that the birds, they, they leave their nest uh, hungry, with empty stomachs. And then they go out having tawakkul, placing their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they come back with their uh, bellies, their stomachs full, right? And who is it that provides for them? Who is the one that guides them to this provision? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, when, they, when they speak about uh, you know, certain animals, when they, they are born, uh, they are born in one particular place and then they, uh, they travel and they go to many different places in their lifetime. But when it comes to themselves having children, they come back to that same place that they were, were first, uh, that they were born into. Right? So they come back even if they travel far distances. Uh, the birds that we see, they travel in the winter time far, far away. Right? And subhanAllah, some of them, uh, some of these scientists and people who have studied these birds, they say that these birds, they travel uh, to the same places. Right? They might leave Victoria and they travel to South America or wherever they go and they go to the same region and then they come back and even if a bird has never been 
it is as if there is something that is guiding this bird. Right? So in Islam we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that guides not only the believers, as we will speak about later, but all his creation. And this guidance is a general guidance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides the uh, creation to their um, to that which benefits them. It is important when we speak about guidance to also separate the different types of guidance uh, within itself. By that I mean that human beings are given uh, a certain type of guidance. Right? In the beginning we quoted a verse uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَهَادِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides those who believe to the straight path. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that guides them. And in other verses in the Qur'an we're told that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِيهِمْ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ And you are the one that guides them to the straight path. Speaking about the Prophet Now, this guidance is different, obviously, to the guidance that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, is given. Uh, the guidance that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala gives His creation. Uh, so the difference is, the scholars in Islam they call one uh, form of guidance uh, that it is uh, the guidance that you show people the truth, okay? the way that the Prophet ﷺ did. Okay? But the true guidance of the heart for the acceptance, that always belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why the Prophet ﷺ, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about him, he refers to the Prophet ﷺ guiding the creation to the haq, showing them the truth, but at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَرْتِ That you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you do not guide whom you love. Right? So we say that this guidance is different. There is a guidance, me showing someone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran اُدْرُوا إِلَى سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ إِلَى عَقِلَ الْآيَةِ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling us to invite people. Right? In Islam, we do not push the religion on others. Just today I had uh, a privilege to speak in front of a small gathering uh, of non-Muslims, explaining to them about Islam. And one of the men, <coughs> men he came up to me uh, after the speech. And he said, I keep hearing that Islam uh, forces the religion on people. That one of your mission in life is to force the religion on people. I said this is a misconception. Yes, we would love for people to become Muslims, but at the same time we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is telling us that the Prophet is not to force others to become Muslims. Allah says, that the only one, the, the only thing that the Prophet is sent with is right? to send that message. But even then, the Prophet he was very concerned with the faith of people. Allah says, Perhaps it might be that you destroy yourself because because these people do not become believers. It was something that really mattered to the Prophet But even then he knew that his job was not to drag people and force people to say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah So the Prophet understood this guidance. And this guidance is not only for the Prophet but it is for anyone 
that treads upon the same path. Anyone that learns the religion, the Prophet ﷺ said, right? Convey on my behalf, even if it is one verse, or one uh, sign, or so, uh, uh, an ayah, right? Something that I have passed on to you. But in order for us to do that, you have to understand the message of the Prophet ﷺ to begin with. Uh, there's an expression in Arabic, they say a person that does not possess something cannot give it to others. Right? If you do not have it, you can't give it to others. And the problem that we have today, one of the many problems, is that a lot of us, everyone wants to give da'wah. Everyone wants to stand up on the stage and speak on behalf of Islam and Muslims. But very few take the time to learn about Islam. To learn about Islam in the right way, learning the, the usul, the foundations of the religion. If you ask these people, how much Quran do you know? They will shake their head. If you ask them, how many hadiths of the Prophet ﷺ do you know? They will shake their head. They don't know. And like Umar bin Abdul Aziz, like Allah, he said uh, in one of his statements that if a person speaks without knowledge, he causes more harm than benefit. He causes more harm than benefit. And the pious people before, they used to say, if only the people who did not know would have kept silent, then a lot of problems would have been solved. Right? So this guidance, coming back to the guidance, the guidance is in everyone's hand that you can learn about the religion and you can pass on that message. So this guidance is a specific type of guidance that you show, you're showing people what the religion means. And this is separate from the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One thing that is specific to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the guidance that is uh, the religious guidance. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides the ones that He loves to Al Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, then He is the one that is truly guided. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in many other verses in the Quran that. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wants good for someone uh, or to guide someone, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up his heart, his chest towards al Islam, the religion. Right? So this guidance is specific and this guidance is the most valuable thing in life. Because if a person is given this guidance, then they will succeed in this world and the hereafter. And many people don't realize that. We run after worldly wealth, we run after status, we run after honor, we run after many different things in this Hayati dunya. And we do not truly value that Iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has um, blessed us with. A person might lose their Iman little by little without realizing it. And it doesn't matter to them. But the moment that they lose their car, the moment they lose their house, that's when people wake up. One of the previous scholars, he said, the, we all fear uh, poverty, right? Fuck. We fear it. Right? And you can see it in our actions. We worry day and night. If we can't make the, uh, if we can't pay the rent end of this month, what will happen? Will we be able to sleep at night? No. We'll be thinking about it constantly. 
If we can't pay the rent at the end of this month or beginning of next month, we start asking people. We make phone calls. Do you have another $500? Do you have $1,000? There is that amal, there is that action. Right? We keep working on it. We don't just push it aside. And this one scholar he said, if only we feared the punishment in the Akhirah in the same way that we fear poverty in this world, then you would have seen amazing things. Just not being able to pay your bills will drive you crazy. You will literally run to different places. You will even do the job that you never thought you would do. Right? All to make ends meet, to live. Whereas the after, <coughs> we are told time and time again, and we are told the value of our Iman. And many of us, <coughs> we fall into this trap that we think that we think to ourselves that my Iman is strong, Alhamdulillah. I come to the masjid, I pray, I read Quran, I fast in Ramadan, I do as much as I can. But Shaytan never stops coming to you. He will come to you in many different ways. And if he loses hope in you, there are other people that you are responsible for that he will try. If you have been blessed with children, Shaitan will try to come to your children. And you might be the father or mother that has the strong Iman. But little by little, your child is removed from Islam. And you will be amazed and shocked the amount of things that I hear as an Iman. And this is not to say just in this community. Alhamdulillah, this community is fairly good. But it is just the way it is living so far away from, uh, you know, Muslims in general. These things are bound to happen, and it's the sad truth. Some of you were here during the the youth conference that we had, right? and if you remember the Q and A that we had, we had a question and answer session, right? Uh, the youth were encouraged to write questions. And if you remember, some of the questions were very shocking. Many boys and girls were writing saying, I have a girlfriend and I have a boyfriend. What should I do? Other people writing saying that, you know, how can we prove that Allah exists? Questions that I did not read in front of the people. So these are things that Things that are happening in front of us, in front of our eyes, but we don't really notice them. Right? And it is not to say that we lose all hope. Uh, I like to think that if children, the youth, are at a stage where they feel comfortable enough to write a question, and ask the Imam or ask someone in the community about something that they've done, then Alhamdulillah that is a ni'mah, that is a blessing. Many places in the world today, children, they, youth, they do whatever they want and they do not care who disapproves. If the Imam says something, that's it. The Imam is an old man. And if their parents say something, they say, my parents don't understand. But at least we have children, youth in the community, that come to the masjid, that feel some kind of remorse or concern at the very least, that they write these kind of questions. So this guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, have we really shown gratitude for it in our actions? Sad reality is no. The sad truth is we haven't. 
if someone asks, asks you this one blessing that is the highest blessing in this hayat al dunya as long as they say the biggest blessing that a person ever receives is ni'matul iman it's the blessing of iman if someone wants to ask you how much do you pay for this blessing sounds like a strange question how much did you pay for this blessing we didn't pay anything right? not even in terms of effort many of us were blessed enough fortunate enough to be born into muslim families at least the ones that have accepted islam they can say you know i fought i had to put i had to sacrifice but for us that were born Muslims, we take it for granted. And this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us <coughs> about each and every blessing. In some narrations, it mentions that even the cold water that you're drinking, you will be asked about. That is considered to be a minor blessing. Imagine about the blessing of Iman. And the question is not just about yourself. It is what have you done for Islam and the Muslims? Did you help the religion of Allah when the call came? When people needed help? So this is a very difficult question. And it ties in with this guidance and the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unhappy. Um, if a person really ponders and thinks about this name, you come to realize how much in need you are of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it touches on all aspects. You want worldly things. Who is it though the guides towards worldly things? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want the Akhirah, who is it that guides you to the Akhirah? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this name, al hadi it is it's so big and so vast. And from amongst the things that grants a person the tawfiq, the ability uh, to receive more guidance, it is being upon guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ اَهْتَدَوْ زَالَهُمْ هُدَهُمْ وَآتَهُمْ تَقْوَاهُمْ That those who seek guidance, we increase them in guidance. Right? What does that mean? It means in a very literal and practical sense, that if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you even more, you need to come with the effort. The scholars, they say, if you pray Fajr on time, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the ability to pray Dhuhr on time. And if you pray Dhuhr on time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the ability to pray Asr and so on. If you fasted the last Ramadan with Iman and Ihtisab, the way that it is supposed to be, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you the ability to do so this Ramadan as well. One good deed, one action of guidance leads to another. And once you break that cycle and you start stumbling, that is when the shaitan takes advantage. And all it takes is one mistake to give the shaitan just a crack. And if you give the shaitan a crack an inch, he will build on it and he'll keep building and building and building before you don't even realize what has happened. And I'm sure many of you can relate that if we find ourselves in a place with low Iman, it's just a downhill. And I've met many people, subhanAllah, and it's very sad. You see people who tell you that Ten years ago, I was seeking knowledge. Ten years ago, I used to, I was in Hajj. 
10 years ago, I used to do this. And when you look at the state that the person is in now, and the way that they used to be, it's a huge difference. So it comes back to that guidance, that yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yan dealing man yasha, Allah is the one that guides whomever he wants, and at the same time, Allah has promised us that if you work for the guidance, لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that He is the one that will guide you to His path. Right? So it is not enough for us to just sit back. We need to show that um, gratitude, that gratefulness. And like we've said many times before, gratefulness is not just to say Alhamdulillah on the tongue, uh, only on the tongue, but it is to show it in your actions. If you show it in your actions, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised la in that if you are grateful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase you. Whether it is in money, whether it is in guidance, whether it is in whatever you want, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that He will increase you. And if you disbelieve or if you show ungratefulness, then know, remember, that the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very severe. So these are some uh, of the points uh, that I wish to, to mention in terms of uh, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Hadi, uh, and like we always say, there is a lot more that can be said. Each of these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there can be, uh, and there has been volumes written on it. Uh, but for us, the most important thing is to understand uh, the basics of the name and how we can implement it. Uh, and how we can call uh, upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, using uh, this name. So inshallah, uh, with that, we will conclude today's class.